So this video that I wanted to do today was for e-commerce store owners and it applies to other people that are posting offers online, selling products or services. It doesn't matter really. If you want to sell a product or service, you can't just make an offer. All right. As much as an offer is fantastic and is a large portion of the requirement to sell something, you also need to have an audience. And if you think that you're going to put up any kind of offer and then just throw some ads at a cold audience that doesn't know who you are, you're in for a rude awakening. You will spend a lot of money trying to find that. So the first thing that I want to talk to you about is how important the audience is. I see a lot of stuff coming through my emails that talks about people making big wins, posting up an offer, huge amounts of money in 48 hours. Uh, one guy holds the record for a million in 48 hours. There's constantly all these course client information that comes through, which talks about, oh, this person launched an offer and made huge amounts of money in a short little time. How did they do it? Right. And most of the time you're going to see it's without ads. And so of course that's really enticing. That's what we all want, right? That's what we want to be able to throw out any kind of offer, uh, not spend any money on ads and get a huge volume of people purchasing right off the bat. It doesn't matter if we're throwing out a new product or if we're putting together a new service offering, we'd all love those kinds of results. There's a big key that's missing in all of this that's not talked about though. And it is the key that makes a difference as to whether or not your offer is going to be successful. And that is the audience. If you don't have an audience right now, you're not going to be able to drive a massive amount of sales in a short amount of time, organic or paid, reap the rewards from it. It's just not going to happen. Most of these offers that went out that are successful have to do with the fact that the person has already been nurturing an audience for a long time, whether they realize it or not. Yes, you can make a ton of money advertising to a cold audience, but it takes a ton of money to do so. Customer acquisition costs are typically much higher for a colder audience because it takes you a while to build up a relationship with them. For the same reason, you'll see a lot of studies come out that say that it requires three touch points or seven touch points in order to get somebody to buy from you, which is true. And that's on a cold audience. That is not true if it's on a warm or hot audience. Most businesses that I see are running about a 7% conversion rate on their e-commerce stores because they have a warm audience. Now that might seem high, but it's actually relatively low if all you have is a warm or hot audience. You should be getting 15 or 20% conversion rates on that audience because they're ready to buy from you. And you should be figuring out how to get them to rebuy from you because you don't have to convince them on your product. You just have to do a good job serving them. All right, so let's talk about how do you build this audience? How do you... Where do you start? Um, where's the goal? What's the target that we're looking for? How do you nurture them? Okay. So first off, everybody has this ability, and that is with your Facebook profile to build an audience. Okay. Your personal, your personal Facebook profile is the most valuable thing that you have in your arsenal at this time. Okay. If you already have a giant list and a ton of emails. Sure, that's going to be more valuable to you, but everybody is a starting point. If you are restarting, the most valuable thing to you is your Facebook profile. How is that valuable and how do you use it? First off, the first thing that you do and that everybody else does on Facebook is open up the profile to look to see who the person is, what business that they're in, who are they, especially if you're using it for networking. So the first thing that you want to do is use your large cover photo as your call to action. You'll notice that on my um, Facebook profile, it's being used as that. You can pick any call to action that you want, but it needs to be a call to action that does two things. One, filters the people in your friends list down to those that you want to do business with. That's the first requirement. The second requirement is that the call to action needs to build a new list that you can control. You see Facebook, 
uh, Facebook's algorithm makes it very difficult for us to get our reach out there. Even if we maxed out our friends list at 5,000 people, it still makes it really difficult to make a post and get more than a hundred or a couple hundred uh, like on the post. You've got to boost it and spend money and all this other stuff, which is fine because Facebook is filtering. Um, attention is a big thing and they don't want to overwhelm everybody and become irrelevant like Twitter did. Twitter did a poor job of filtering the content people wanted to see and it's just a sea of information out there and you can't get anything. So Facebook's done a really good job staying relevant and keeping people's attention by filtering down what is seen on their Facebook profile, on their Facebook wall. Your job is to get the biggest reach as possible and to be able to speak to everybody on your list. If you've got a million people, you want them on your list. You want them on your list to be able to contact all of them at the same time. Now, when you have that ability, think about this. You've got a hundred thousand people on a list somewhere and you put up an offer. Now these aren't just people. These are people that you have a relationship with. These are people that have maybe already purchased for you, but are consuming your content and understand through trust that you have credibility. Okay. Because you've demonstrated that already. Now with those individuals, if you doesn't nearly, it doesn't matter what offer you put out, um, they're going to buy from you because they understand they're going to get the value you put out because you've already given out so much value. And I'm building up my Facebook profile to do this exact strategy. So follow along with me as I do this and you'll see exactly how effective it is. Now, it's definitely a strategy that works hands down and you will see it time and time again as examples of people saying, hey, I just made $40,000 overnight launching a new offer. This stuff is easy. And here you are maybe struggling to launch offer after offer after offer and nothing happens. It's because if you build it, they will not come. All right. It doesn't work like that. Uh, the old movie was wrong. All right. What you need to do is you need to nurture a massive amount of people that are hungry for your content that are getting value already. And then when you throw out an offer into the crowd, it'll get eaten up. So step one, make sure that your Facebook page, consider that you're going to use it for, for networking and business from here on out. All right. Forget about all the friends that you have on there. And Facebook does a poor job of keeping a business to personal uh, relationship uh, managed on, on their platform. All right. So your profile, super important. Make sure it is your resume and highly tailored to what you want to, um, to sell to. All right. Uh, it's got to attract the right clients and it's got to filter the right clients. That's one. Number two, build up your friends list. So you have 5,000 people available on your friends list. What you're going to want to do is build them up. Now there's a number of ways that you can do that. Um, and I use many different combinations of ways and have to build profiles for uh, many different years. If you notice my LinkedIn profile, which I focused on for a long time, I have thousands and thousands of uh, highly targeted individuals on that profile um, that have been built up through some of these tactics. And that's been there for a long time. Now with um, you need to do the same thing. You need to get as many friends on your list as possible. You need to not accept every friend request, but make sure that it's tailored to the kinds of individuals you want to speak to. Make sure that the friend requests you're sending out are tailored to the kinds of individuals you want to sell to. To do that, the easiest way is to find a group that has all of the people in it that you want to speak to. Engage the group like their content, consume their content, interact with them, post valuable posts, load up the members list for the Facebook group and go through checking all of their job titles, checking their geographic and um, friending them. All right. Facebook is going to throw you all kinds of warnings all the time. Uh, make sure you're only friending people, you know, and like make, you know, it's against our terms. If you're just friending random people, so start local. Start with the people locally closest to you from friends and family. You can sort those, a lot of those lists um, to friends of friends. 
uh, start there and communicate. That's going to help you because your friends are already a warm audience. So if you're doing friends of friends, that's a natural referral for you. So start small. Don't worry about going out and liking people halfway across the world or friending people halfway across the world. It's going to make you it difficult for you to sell to them anyway. For a number of reasons, communication and currency are two of the biggest ones. Facebook profile needs to be very targeted and you use it to filter your friends list to get them to take your call to action and filter out who you want to do business with. That's one. Number two, build up your friends lists. Engage with these individuals. If you don't know your target demographic, this is number three, and this is engaging with them. If you don't know your target demographic, uh, they don't know you. All right. So here's the thing. You, I'm not just saying, you know, their persona, you know, how, what their ages are, you know, what they like doing, blah, blah, blah. That is not going to help, help you. I mean, do you actually know them by name? Do they know you by name? Do you know individual people and their problems? Uh, how are you interacting with them? Do you actually engage with your community? This is really important and very, very valuable and what makes all the difference in the world. If you just have 5,000 friends of people that you never engage with, you never post content on Facebook, you never, uh, in, you never build a relationship with them, then they don't have a relationship with you. Liking stuff, posting unrelated posts, posting political BS. This is business. Set all that aside unless that is your business and focus on providing value hands down to everybody on your list any way possible. Even if it means when somebody interacts with you through messenger that you take them aside and provide them value and get them results for free. Do whatever is possible to build a relationship with these individuals and get them engaged in what you have to provide, the value that you have to offer. All right. The biggest thing in trust building is that you want to provide them with value that they can use right now to generate capital on their end. If you can, can get them to generate money or results what it comes down to. If you can get them to generate results and see results from your free content, then they're going to be more likely to purchase your paid content. Now, it's easy to understand that from a service base. You just get on there like I'm doing right now and provide a ton of value, really important value. Make sure that 80% of it is actionable and only 20% of it is theory. So basically, you just want to focus on giving to-dos, to-dos, to-dos in your content so that people can get results from it. In addition, once you have provided that kind of content from a service standpoint, sure, that's easy. But if you want to do it for a product, that's a little bit harder because for a product, you need an attractive character, which is easier to do in the information business. Uh, with a product, you need to identify who is going to be that attractive character and provide the value to the individuals. And it's harder to get results when your product is designed to solve the problem. So what you need to do is you need to demonstrate the product and how it gets results. You need to educate why you came to the product, the solution that you did in the product and offer do it yourself. Okay, let's give it for example, if I'm selling a piece of software that speeds up your website, all right, I'm going to say, hey, here's the software, it's 20 bucks a year, whatever, it's going to speed up your website, you can buy it, okay, that solves, I'm going to try and get people there, but why do you need a faster website? Then I need to educate people on that. How can you go about speeding up your website in a do-it-yourself manner? I can provide a ton of value and content about image optimization and load times, CDNs, blah, 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 and educate people on why they need a faster website and how they can accomplish it themselves. Now, they can go build out your tool, but most people are just going to say, you know what? I trust you. I'm just going to buy your tool because you're providing me with a ton of value and I want to pay back. I trust you right? A product is the same way. 
All right. A, a physical product is the same way. Say that it's your yard and, and you've, you're selling a lawnmower. Um, sure, they can buy your product as a solution, but you need to be providing value and teaching them how what height to cut their yard, things that they can use when they buy your product, things that are difficult to do. That's why you created your product in the first place. Sure, you can teach them to go get the scissors out and the pruners and sh shear around the flowers out in their yard, whatever it takes to teach them how to take care of their yard. The easier method for them is just going to be to buy your product. But the first thing that you need to do is show them that you understand them and understand their problem and understand how they can get results. And then later on, they can buy your product. Now, uh, there's one thing that I've put out that I want to be able to add more value to you and your life and your business. So I put out a survey. I'll link to it in the um, description of this video. I would love for you to take that survey. Uh, tell me the problems that you're dealing with. Tell me the things that you want to know from me so that I can provide you with more value. And I will put together all kinds of free courses on a constant basis and teach you more incredibly valuable assets just like this. Uh, just go ahead and take the survey. It's completely free. Anytime I put out new content uh, or when I put together the ebook or uh, whatever uh, training I'm considering, uh, I'll send you an invite. Go ahead and take that survey. It's going to help me out and it's going to help you out. Thanks.